Hi, everyone. Uh, so glad you guys are here today. This is our final class in the bread series that we have been doing. And we have a super special guest, <laughs> my mama. Um, she is out visiting right now. Um, our two boys are playing basketball and she came out for a game. And so it's super special that she's here. And uh, in the when we first started these, someone had asked if we could share a recipe for um, donuts and my mom immediately came to mind. It sounds weird to say mom because her name, we uh, go by Mono in our family. That's what she's called. And uh, the first thought that I had when someone asked me about the donuts was um, my mom's banana donuts. And it's something she made us as kids and she has continued to make those for all the grandchildren. And so it's just a fun, memorable thing for all of us. And we wanted to share that with you today. So she is here to walk us through it. And I am just going to be her helper helper today. Um, I'll show you uh, just a quick picture of what they look like. Um, if you guys can see that, um, they're super, super pretty. Um, so we're going to have some fun. And we're going to take you through step by step um, of this process and um, piece it all together for you because it's gonna take about two hours to make these two to three is the range that we gave for today's recipe. So we've pre-recorded this for you guys, um, but we hope you try them and love them as much as our family does. So I am gonna turn it over and so walk us through how you do it and you know, just you show us what you would do and that's all you have to do. Okay, no, no, I will do my best. You begin by getting a cup, of, a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Okay, I can help you with that part. Mm -hmm. Put it over here. All right. And so where do you want me to put that in? The bowl? Uh, in here, if you're fine. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use a, a mixer today, but you can do this just in a regular bowl as well. You don't have to use a mixer. So that's a cup and a half of flour. Okay, and then you add one package of yeast or two tea, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I tend to use Red Star yeast, but like you were saying, Fleischmann's is good. Fleischmann, mm -hmm. use the packet. So use one packet mm -hmm. or um, one packet of yeast is equal to two and a fourth teaspoon. Um, that's what each is in each packet. So you can use either one. So we're just putting that in with the flour. Do we need to mix it? Yes, we okay. do. Just get it so it's blended all just a little bit. And then you add, uh, let's see, you add the, okay, and then you go from there. You leave that for right now and you add three quarters of a cup of milk in a saucepan, a small saucepan. So three fourths a cup of mm -hmm. whole milk. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what type of milk. I haven't found it's made a difference. Okay. I've been using two percent for years. Okay. So and we use whole milk at my house, so that's what we're using mm -hmm. today. So and then you cut up a half a cup of butter or one stick. I'll grab one and yeah. mm -hmm. I'll cut it up. And the reason you do that is when you uh, put the, the butter on the stove. You don't want to have the whole chunk uh, in one piece because otherwise your milk will get too hot and you'll have to let it cool off because you don't want to get it too too warm because it will kill the yeast. Mm -hmm. And so I always just slice it up. Yeah, so if you ever find that you're um, in throughout this bread series, we've used yeast in all of the recipes. If you ever find that something's not raising, it's probably because the yeast was killed in the beginning with too hot of water. So we're, we have our milk in here. We have our half a cup of butter, one stick that has been cut up into small bits. And then a fourth of a cup of sugar. Let's do that first. Okay, fourth of a cup mm -hmm. of sugar. Have that right here. So we're going to add that in. And then next is, and then we get, we do a whole teaspoon of banana extract. Now you guys, I have told you guys before that I don't use a lot of extracts, but I tried one time to make this without banana extract. It's not the same. It really is uh, 
the secret sauce to this um, to get that intense banana flavor. So it's worth it. I think this one is just a Kroger brand, so you can get it at King Supers. Mm -hmm. um, and this is all that goes into here. Well, wait a minute. I think we have, salt. yes, yeah. we're going to need some salt. Three quarters teaspoon of kosher salt. Uh huh. And I have it pre measured in here. And then let's see. I think that's it. So that's it. So we're going to head on over to the stove. Um, so we're going to close out this session and um, go film uh, what we're going to do with this on the stove. Uh -huh. Okay, we're laughing because uh, we're filming the second part. We're getting, getting started here. We're cracking each other up. Uh, we are going to put this saucepan on a medium, medium low. to low uh, heat. We'll take a look at it here so you guys can see. So it's a medium to low. So you can go ahead and describe, again, we have our milk in here and our butter mm -hmm. and salt, a little bit of sugar, and we're just stirring it around. Yeah, you want to get the sugar incorporated in it so it, it dissolves. So it's going to get warm enough to dissolve. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, what we like to do on, you know, when we do these videos is, I often say is um, these are unedited and so that way you see the real time that it takes uh, to you know whip this up um, we don't want to edit anything out because we just want to show you the real deal and so it's just gonna take a you know I would say less than five mm -hmm. minutes mm -hmm. in general it's starting to melt already. You can see it. And do you think that's just because of how you cut up the butter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. Otherwise, if you do it with a whole stick, then you have to let us take it off the stove and either that or put it in a different bowl and let it heat or mm -hmm. cool down. Because Could you do this in the microwave or you run the risk if, of getting it too hot? I think it would probably be too hot. Okay. I really do. I suppose you could do it in 10 second increments if your mm -hmm. microwave does that, but my particular one doesn't. 30 seconds is the smallest. And you had uh, shared, I mean, I've seen you do this enough times and I've done it enough times that, you know, with this particular recipe, we're not going to use a candy thermometer to measure our heat on this at all. Um, some recipes would have you do that, but we want to be super practical here. Not everyone has a candy thermometer. Mm -hmm. So the good old fashioned way of testing the warmth of your butter is to do what? Dip your finger in it. Yep. And I, I like to uh, think of it as being just a tad warmer than baby formula. Just enough that there's a, uh, a bite there. Mm -hmm. And But not scalding. No, yeah. not scalding, no. Mm -hmm. Definitely not too hot. Yeah, so I'm just going to zoom in close. Mm -hmm. You can see those chunks, and it's certainly melting. It's turning that nice, pretty yellow color. And we are on close to the three-minute mark, so we are definitely going to be done within five minutes on this part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can even see, you know, you can watch the bubble formations mm -hmm. on the outside as well as it gets warmer and warmer. And again, this is on a medium heat for you guys. And I understand why they fast forward, you know, these segments up on when they do, you know, television shows and stuff. But I really want to give you the, the real tried and true method and what's involved so nothing's really glamorized. And I think you can do it in a 30 seconds. So you'll just have to bear with us as we uh, mold through this. You can also I think make, I said mold through this. I meant move through this. Yeah. <laughs> you can also do make them in you know real real fine slivers. Mm -hmm. That that goes a little bit faster. I think that would probably be it. Yeah, do you want to mm -hmm. test it? Like you would. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to cool just for a minute or so. And how would you describe it? How you mean temperature-wise? Mm -hmm. um, I would say 
of 200, probably 230, something like that. Because 200 is not very hot. Mm -hmm. It's hot, but it's not very hot. Okay. But, so you can yeah. touch it mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so we are back again. We just melted the butter up and um, we're gonna just, uh, I told you guys I have this counter for these purposes. Um, so they may not be heat, heat proof, but um, put a towel under there. And so we have our liquid here and we're just gonna be adding it to our dry ingredients, which was the uh, yeast and the flour. I don't know. Okay, I just pour it in. We're just going to beat on low for what, 30 seconds or so until it starts to come together. Okay. So um, now we're going to add in our final two ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to take a banana. Yeah, let's do the egg first, if you don't mind, and we'll just stay in order of the rest. Oh, of okay. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, she likes to crack in a bowl. And so when she sees me crack directly in, but see, she used my method to turn it up, right? I learned last yeah. week. <laughs> I learned last week. Okay. I have a bowl there. Um, she's just going to beat on the egg a little bit. Yeah, there again, if you put the egg in too soon and it's too warm, you'll have cooked eggs. So that's another reason. And I have it too hot. Yep, so you can grab that bowl and have a fork mm -hmm. over there for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's two ways to mash up a banana. And she's going to show you her method. And then I will actually show you what I do too. And you know, this, we were waiting for these bananas to ripen a little bit more, um, but they, they'll still work. Um, you know, the darker they are with the brown spots, the sweeter they are. And she's just going to use a small bowl and use a fork to mash it up. And what I do is sometimes I just take my fingers like this and mash up the banana in my hands like that. And then you'll see it start to crack. And then I just split it open and do the same thing. And you basically just started the mashing process. Mm -hmm. And then Mono will finish this up and you can just turn it. That does do a nice job. It does, not that. bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are just our wet ingredients on top of, we're finishing out the wet ingredients. And you're looking for what, a half a, a cup? Half a cup. And you know what? Don't get too overly picky about this. If it's a little bit more, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're not aiming for a full cup of banana, but if you're over a little bit, not an issue at all. It looks like we're going to be pretty much mm -hmm. right on the money. So we looked at two um, bananas, as you saw, they were medium sized. And yeah, we might as well. Mm -hmm. We have maybe a teaspoon. So probably wouldn't matter. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to mix this on high for I think probably three minutes usually, right? Mm -hmm. Let me scrape in. Do you care if I scrape in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For about three minutes. And then we'll start to um, mix it by hand with uh, the flour. Did you add the flour into this mixture? I do. Okay. And I then we'll do it for everything else by hand. So I'll uh, set this to the side. Are you going to do that too? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're letting it mix, like we said, for three minutes or so.
The original recipe I used called to mix it in by hand, but I had a kitchen and it was you know it's easier. You could do it that way, it's less than that. Okay. So now we're adding in about two to two and a half cups of flour. Um, how do you judge, Mom? Do you uh, I start do a little with bit two at cups time. first? I just leave it up and I just add a little bit at a time. Oh, I, yeah, I do. Uh -huh. Yeah, I put it so, down for you. Yeah. Well, I don't have a mixture like I have this, is you know, the yeah. permanent in it stays. But I just put it in there like that. And let it go a little bit. Okay. And just slowly incorporate. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's, you know, everybody has different preferences, but this is what I do. I seem to have better luck with doing it slowly. Okay. And that's not to say I didn't have flour blow out at the same time. So that I think you're a little shy of one cup on the first one. We're aiming for about two cups, uh, but I think this is the part where you're looking at it visually. Mm -hmm. You guys can see overhead how the flour is getting mixed in and incorporated. It tends to keep the soupy stuff in the middle, so I always drop it down. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Mm -hmm. It helps get it consistent. And you're just letting the mixer do your work. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A lot of times I will kind of clean off the blade and that will make sure it's all incorporated. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to get your spatula for that or usually just kidding? Oh, it's spatula would be as it's you know. What are we looking for? Uh, a very smooth uh, texture. Okay. Just so it's nice and smooth and kind of glossy. So maybe I'm, as I'm watching you do this, I'm thinking maybe I don't even mix long enough. Uh, I, I haven't quite just gotten a little to. bit more. Okay. I need a little bit more. And it depends on the weather with the moisture. Here in Colorado, being so dry, I I guess I have made them here, mm -hmm. but um, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And see, you know, what I want you guys to see, like the flower flies, it's completely mm -hmm. normal. <laughs> Yeah, it does look pretty mm -hmm. smooth. What yeah. do you think? I think that's probably going to be it because we can always add more flour. That's a that's a perfect tip yeah. to say is um, once we lay roll it out onto our counter, you can always add more. Mm -hmm. And so and do you, you just sprinkle to. some out? Just a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? You think? Mm -hmm. A wee bit more, so it's more consistent, so you don't get it sticking to the yeah. the board. Oops, just added a big chunk. Is that all right? Mm. So much was about there we go. So it's a little trickier to see on this uh, overhead view with the white on white, but once we get the blade on there or the dough on there. And a lot of people nowadays they use the uh, dough dough hook, but I love to to knead dough. 
No. Yeah, I don't use the dough hook very often at mm -hmm. all. I, I tend to do it bit. by hand as well. Mm -hmm. It's just I just didn't get seem to. That is actually very smooth dough. That's mm -hmm. a really good tip. That's not too rugged. You can really see the nice smoothness of it. So that was a, a great. Or you don't want it too moist, too wet. But if it is, then yeah, you just add, incorporate more flour as you need. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I think that's about got it. I can take. Okay. Okay. I should have anchored my hair down better. Mm -hmm. You just do your magic. So, um, what are you doing right now? now I'm just flowering my hands. It always makes it better. Flowering your hands first. It's just a tad much. You never know how much it's going to take. Mm -hmm. And you can always move it to the side like exactly, you're doing. Exactly. And it's kind of based on the stickiness of your counter as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm <clears> showing <throat> you the method that she does. You know, yeah. we're showing this way. I tend to lay out a sheet of plastic wrap on my counter for cleanup purposes, and I knead it directly on the plastic yeah. wrap with the flour. And I've incorporated a lot of your plastic wrap mm -hmm. things it because just, I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, this is the way you do it, though, so mm -hmm. I wanted to show this version. But either way works um, what you find helpful. And she's a master kneader, so it's fun watching her oh, do this. I know about that. Well, you are. And, just, you know, just describe what you're doing. You're rotating it in a circle, and you're grabbing a fourth of an edge mm -hmm. at a time, and then you turn it every yeah, quarter. It. And then if you, it's starting to stick, so I'll add a little bit more, mm -hmm. just to put the dusty. And... What are you aiming for as you need? What are you personally looking for since you've done this so many times? Uh, just, oh goodness. Isn't it interesting to try to describe it mm -hmm. to other people? See, and that's what I've never thought about. Yeah, because you do it so often, like yeah. you could do it in your sleep. Uh, see, it's still sticky, a little bit sticky. So and you're I, looking for something where it's not sticky. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you're pulling with your fingers and then pressing down. You just your push palms. down the air. And it may, that I think it, what it does is it makes sure everything is mixed together. So like let me just describe, let's do that one more time really quick. And I, I'm just gonna describe what you're doing. So okay. she does it so quickly because you can tell it's second nature. So she turned it over. So there's flour on you both just sides. Bring it over. Bring and the then top push over down to the really middle, hard. turn it. Uh -huh. You don't have to flower each time. And she's keeping it on that backside. She's not lifting it up and turning it over, just the one uh -huh. edge, just each edge of that circle. Yeah. So think of it like a clock and quarter sections. Yeah. I think that's it. So do you look at the top and what do you well, look at? feel it's not sticky. Top? It's it just got yeah, a wee that bit. Piece? That's banana. And you're going to find, you're right. yeah. okay. and uh, you, you know, if you don't haven't made them before, you're going to so think, oh my lord. Yeah, that's not but, sticky yeah, at all. No, yeah, but it doesn't feel dry. I do have mm -hmm. to say that yeah. there's still like a little bit of tackiness mm -hmm. when you yeah. say a little, just yeah, slightly tacky. there is. Okay, now you can you know, lay it down and you get your bowl and just scatter it really good. And we're just oiling up, she's oiling up the uh, bowl. And, you know, people use nonstick cooking spray. Mm -hmm, you um, can do that. You can use oil as well. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with good old fashioned butter. Mm -hmm. I agree for that. Okay, I'm just bring it in here and flip it over. So you put the seam side, um, the top yeah. down first, mm -hmm. flip it over so the seam side is down. Yeah. Yeah. And then we put a towel over uh -huh. it. Just a towel and put it in a warm area. Um, you know, that's actually, it's very common in a recipe, they say to put it in a warm area. And it, I remember when I first started cooking, well, I didn't know really what that meant in my house. Um, the easiest rule of thumb, well, if you live in Colorado Springs, you'll know the West is where the mountains are. Um, but try to put it in a south facing location. That's gonna be your warmest room of the house. And um, so if you can 
Um, if you know of hot spots or warmer spots in your house, um, certainly put it there. And so what I do is I take this to our south facing room, um, which is for the front of the house, and I put it in there to rise. And uh, just try not to have it be in a drafty yeah, place, yeah. like next to you, where the big thing. Where doors opening and closing. Mm -hmm. And if you got kids <clears throat> running in and out like I did years ago, you put it in the oven with a hot bowl of water under at the very bottom. And it does amazing. It really does. Well, see, and this is the fun part, too. So look at this. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the real life stuff. That's, so that's the fair yeah. Okay, so how long are we gonna let this sit? At in least an spot? hour. Okay, I'll say an hour. And we're looking for it to double. Double. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So we're gonna be back in an hour, and uh, we will show you what this looks like. Okay, so we've let this rise um, for an hour and um, you're looking for just that it's doubled in size and so you can grab it mom and punch it down. Mm -hmm. Just punch it down. And you're just getting the air out of it is mm -hmm. all. And then tell us what you're doing. You're putting it down on a flowered surface yes. again? Uh -huh. Okay. And you want to roll your rolling pin in the flour and make sure it's well floured and then just start rolling it out in about a half inch thickness. I think that looks about right. And then you're going to take a bowl with some flowers, flour in it. Do you want me to um, dust and how do you prepare your pans? Okay, that's a good idea. Here, I just Pick this up. I just take some flour and spread it around. Yeah, I'm very nice. guys here see mm -hmm. You don't want a whole lot, but just enough so it doesn't stick on the pan when you when after they raise. Okay, there's one. Okay. How many sheets do you think we need? Like two uh, or something? Normally double this. Uh, I'm thinking one would one probably more. be enough. Okay. I think so. Perfect. We, we'll see. And just dip your. Now you, you're bread. using a cookie or a donut cutter. Mm -hmm. What happens if you don't? We didn't have a donut cutter growing no, up, did we? No. When I first got married, I used the glass and my thimble. And you do the same thing a, a water glass. How many people can say they've heard that word in a long time? I know. She's okay. an avid sewer. <laughs> um, but a thimble is what we use. But you yeah. could use a round. A yeah, let me show them. This is yeah. what a donut cutter looks like. So you could get a regular size round cookie cutter and then just a smaller one. They come mm -hmm. in these kits where they're various sizes and that works well, the exact same way. Yeah, right? and I have used the lid. In case you don't have a thimble on hand. Yeah, but that's a an lid alternative. Of, of, uh, different containers, you'd be surprised how many. A jar have. lid. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah. You get creative and find yeah. things. If, yeah, if you don't have the money and don't have a lot of things, you can figure it out. But you just start out. I'm very careful the way I cut them out. I, I make sure that I use as much dough as possible. I don't want to have to waste any of it. And you're trying not to deflate it. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh. So, well, I'll go ahead and put this one on here. Sometimes, you know. You, I think this is probably going to work. Normally, what I do is wait until it's all all done. Elaine, do you want to put those on there as we sure. go? That would probably be the simplest. And so you're taking out the centers? Yes. Uh huh. You do those separately. Okay. And I always okay. found the kids couldn't wait to get the centers. They love those. Yeah, donut holes. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're called? Yeah. And you're going to lay the, these on these cookie sheets. That one looks like a heart. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's mm -hmm. kind of cute, but I'll make it round again. The center. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're putting them out on the cookie sheet, and we're going to let them rise again, right? Yes. Uh -huh. What's that do, letting them rise mm -hmm. twice? Do you know? It just puffs them up. It gives them, uh, makes them fluffier. Okay, yeah. And you can tell when you're working with this dough, you can really tell that it, it feels delicate. 
-hmm. it's not tough at all. And so that's how you're going to also know that you're going to have a tender donut. These are coming right off. It just depends how much moisture is in your dough. Is sometimes you know you have to have a lot of flour under them, mm -hmm. and other times not. This one's not needing that much flour. And uh, you know we're already at about twelve donuts already. Um, mm -hmm. So this size is perfect for the average, you know, family, couple of people. Um, in our family, this would not last. <laughs> No, I As you guys know, things don't last here, um, but we, Mono always doubles it when she makes it for my boys um, and uh, when all three of the kiddos are home, then we plow through these. Um, what's fun is uh, these actually freeze great and you can pull them right out um, you get the and microwave salt. them and they taste like they're fresh. More. Now, do you try to uh, re-roll this dough? I do. You do. There never is uh, fluffy. Mm -hmm. When you rework a dough like this, it uh, toughens it a little bit, but the taste is the same. It's just not as neat as the... Kind of like biscuits. Yeah. Those last same. couple that you re-roll. Yeah, that makes sense. Very definitely. Well, these are not wanting to cut. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It might just be dull. Yeah, it could very well be. Okay. You want to put the the uh, centers someplace and you on your pan. Okay. Now I'm going to rework this dough a little bit to get it incorporated. It's going to be a little bit drier, I'm sure. Just so you guys can see, when you spread them out on the sheet like this, the donut holes, just give a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. We are going to need this extra um, cookie sheet. I'm just going to do the same thing that she was telling us. Uh, dust it with a little bit of flour. And then just spread it around. Make sure all the nooks and crannies are covered. Like she said, we just don't want things to stick. And we're going to let these rise again. So we're looking for some height volume. And, you know, this is a fun one because we're making a huge mess with all this flour. Oh my gosh, yes. And the dog is below us right now. You can't see him. <laughs> and he is waiting for things to fly. So he is being smart right now. Mm -hmm. I'll let you get that one out of there. Yeah, and just, you know, if there's any frayed edges or anything, you just tuck them under. Yeah, and a lot of times what I do, like now, I can't make another one, so I'll just cut that and put it on the sheet to raise up, and be, it'll be similar to the, the donut holes. Do you think you can get one more out of that, that all together? Mm -hmm. It would be awful tough. I'll try, you know, I can do it, but I, I was going to say, I think it would be awful tough. Yeah, we'll give it a the shot. More you work the dough, the tougher it gets. Those will be our test samples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the end pieces sometimes yeah. of things. And definitely still, definitely mm -hmm. edible, just yeah. might have a different texture. There we go. Texture. You see, it's not as finished. Yeah, not as smooth. Yeah. Let's see another one. Okay, and just pick those in there and we'll fry those up. Okay. So I'll just roll them into balls. Yeah, I'm going to work too. Yeah. Just so they're not too big. Okay. I'll try to make them the same size as those donut holes. We talk a lot about this in class about trying to keep things uniform. That way when you're adding them, you'll know. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this cookie sheet and grab a, a towel and we're going to let these rise again. And so we're looking at 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, just look at them. And you want to see them increase again, um, double in size for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll be back with you. Yeah. As they'll puff up when they're, they're frying as yeah. well. Yep. As soon as they hit that heat, they yeah. will puff up. So we'll give it another 30 minutes 30, or so. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you guys 30. know how long we waited. And so you can see them. And uh, what we like to do is um, maybe as we see them rising 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes before, 
and we know the rise is going to be complete, that's when we start to heat up our oil mm -hmm. so that is ready. Um, so we're going to be uh, doing that as well. Yeah. We'll move over to the stove uh, um, pretty quickly mm -hmm. you know, when we start back up. So we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Okay, so we've let these donuts uh, rise. Um, and, you know, maybe we were a little bit impatient. Um, they could have even risen a little bit more. Um, but as Mana pointed out that, you know, these have banana in them too. So it's not going to be light and, you know, as big as what maybe a glazed donut would be. Mm -hmm. And we put a big stock pot on the stove with just a, about a couple of inches, go by inches, um, of oil so the donuts can fall down in there and we have a thermometer on here we're looking for 375 and uh, it should finish up here in just a couple of seconds and so what we're going to do is i'm just it's 375 oh it's a little mm -hmm. over so we're going to get started mm -hmm. and the way that mono does it is she tests it first with the donut hole drops it in and they'll float on the top, and you're just... I'm just gonna say that looks pretty good. As long as it's, uh, it's... Um, sizzling? Wanna, sizzling, yes, I couldn't think of the word. Do you want it to sizzle, the sizzle? And then with the holes, you normally don't have to turn them over. But I'm gonna go ahead and start putting another one in. And I use my fingers, but I'm very careful with it. I just ease it in there very slowly and you don't want to overcrowd. Now yeah. see that, that, that one's turned, whoops. That donut hole is. Yeah, so she just dropped them in using her hand. If you don't feel comfortable around super hot oil, then use a uh, slotted spoon and drop them down in there or a spatula. Okay. That is fine too. And uh, we can see that donut hole is already turning nice and brown and they don't always want, there it's going to turn over. A lot of to now. Yeah, they'll see. flip back. Yeah, the holes will. Now the donuts won't. <laughs> but you just sometimes have to hold them down. And it doesn't matter either if they're not done on the other side. But you just want to watch for your, you know, you're going to use fork. But turn it over. There we go. Yep, and look how nice and golden brown those are. And you don't want to turn them over quite too soon if they're light in color. But now these are perfectly golden brown. Mm -hmm. That's perfection. And we can tell that donut hole is getting brown on the bottom too. And uh, sometimes they'll stay and you have to hold it a little bit. We wanted to show you that for sure. And you I'm know, what did this take? Just a few, few seconds, seconds yeah. to start to brown up. And that one is, looks like a little hush puppy. Oh, it's we have a runner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I think it went under. There we are, right over there. So I can show you, it's hot. Um, but you can see how nicely golden brown that is. And then I think it's ready to, let's see. Yeah, see, it's perfect yeah, on so the other side. So you can take it out. We're using a, a Chinese style spoon that drains spider. things, a spider. Um, I have only had that maybe what, Six months or so mm -hmm. you gave it to me because you swear by them I just use mm -hmm. a slotted spoon but so we're just it. reaching yeah. uh, you know for the donuts grabbing them and plopping them down in and on average you know you're looking at four to five donuts mm -hmm. but remember every time you add uh, take out the donuts the temperature changes so we'll just show you yeah. it's 371 and so it's gonna need to rise back up to temperature to cook these but as long as you stay in that 370 range you'll be fine and these will brown up pretty nicely and as you go along it gets quicker and quicker as the oil heats up but you don't want to overcrowd those pans and I would say that one's probably not as golden as our first batch yeah. the, they were hotter 
Yeah. That was just a little bit hotter. No, that's perfect. Right and so there. we'll check our temperature before we add this next mm -hmm. batch and just see how close we are to 375. And that's really all there is to it. Mm -hmm. And as uh, I'm going to let uh, Mono continue frying these up, and then I'm going to take you guys over and show you how we dip these uh, donuts and put a glaze on them. And so we'll just finish this out with you here with this second batch. And she will continue working on the rest of these. And I might show one more just to, let's see. So it dropped down to 368, 369. Mm -hmm. we'll wait a while. So yeah, we'll just give it a minute or so, um, maybe 30 seconds. You never quite know how long it takes to come back up to temperature. It's moving along pretty quickly here. Yeah, we're already at 370. So look how pretty those are. Mm -hmm. Super simple, and you're eyeballing it um, based on the color when you decide to flip it over. So it's at 373 already, so we are gonna be at 375 in a blink of an eye here. And we just wanna show you all this. I'll probably end this at the six minute mark or so and head over for our glaze. And we're at 374, so we're close. Mm -hmm. So we can probably go with it. Yeah. yeah, so she's just gonna grab those, add those in. And she's just literally plopping them down. She's not shy. Um, you just keep it, uh, your fingers. You don't wanna hold the whole thing. Just hold it delicately. I may be not so brave and I would use a you know, she has those hands that know how to deal with hot things. I have. And <laughs> so it's ugly hands. They've been they've been burned a lot of times. Yeah, so maybe just uh I wouldn't say ugly hands, but I would say that uh if you're sensitive to heat, then certainly use a slotted spoon. And she's just mm -hmm. using a fork to turn them over and you can test one. You're not hurting it at all. Did you mention that I usually use a, an electric skillet? No, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have an electric skillet. Um, you use an electric skillet mm -hmm. and that's how you heat up your oil. So you don't have to worry about having the thermometer. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys have an electric skillet, use that, you know, use your 375 temperature. And she says she swears by it. Um, I don't have one. Like I told you, I don't have a ton of gadgets. I kind of go down to the bare minimum. Well, you can do, you can uh, cook more at a time. That's and so show them it. that, how you turned it and you saw that it was paler mm -hmm. in color. Mm -hmm. You just lifted it up mm -hmm. and it's pale. So mm -hmm. she just flipped it right back over. And again, we don't make these for, I mean, once a year, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. not even once every couple of years, yeah. it all depends. And so you know, we're not huge fryers in general, but you know, this is a fun thing to do. I know someone had asked me about baked donuts and you can bake donuts in the oven as well. The texture is going to be different, obviously, because you're not using the oil. And it's totally different too. Yeah. The whole thing is Okay. Different. Well, I'm going to move on and show you guys the glaze. So I'm going to finish this up here. Hey guys, so I am back um, and I was just going to show you how to glaze these up. Um, Mono is continuing to cook over there um, by the stove and I just thought I'd show you how to glaze them. Um, they're still pretty warm. I can feel that heat on them and we're just going to have a small, grab a small bowl and you're going to put two cups of powdered sugar in here and then um, we're going to doctor it again with uh, that banana extract that we talked about earlier with a half a teaspoon. Oops, and there we go. Right in with the powdered sugar. Lid back on. And then I have warmed up um, some milk. 
and that helps it set. So I add in a tablespoon at a time, and you might need um, two tablespoons, but you'll put um, the uh, milk in, and then you're gonna whisk it around, and most people will think that they don't have enough liquid, but just keep stirring, and it's gonna come together, you'll see it. We'll stick to your whisk, and so I'm just gonna add in just a little bit more here, and that's probably right at the two tablespoon mark. You just wanna work in uh, little increments of milk. And uh, you can see that it's nice and white and super uh, creamy looking. And I have powdered sugar flying a little bit. I'm using a rather shallow bowl. And I try to keep it a little bit on the thicker side because then it coats it nicely on the top of the donut so you can you guys can see that it's ribbony, just like this. I'm gonna see this off, the whisk off to the side. And then this is time to get a little bit dirty and we just grab the um, donut hole and hopefully you guys can see me. I'm gonna move over and adjust just to make sure. And you grab the donut and just gently press it down in and shake it back and forth like I'm doing. And then you guys can see it's nice and white. And you just turn it over onto a wired rack. And we already have that set up with the paper towels underneath and that's gonna catch all the drips. Or little fingers can run underneath there and grab that. And so we're just taking that, the tops of the donuts and spinning it back and forth. We shake and turn it over and look how pretty that looks. And you just keep going. And you can also grab a donut hole and do the same thing and dip it down in. And if you want to coat the whole thing, you can grab a fork and do that. I'm you know, using my fingers right now and I just shake back and forth. And you do the same. And if your um, icing or glaze starts to get, if it's too thick, you can always add a little bit more milk in. And there's our donut hole like that. And you can, like I said, drop it down in there and grab a fork and then shake it back and forth. That works too. You guys can see how that looks. And I'm just going to keep going. And it, you can tell it already sets in uh, the dish. You can see that kind of crust form over the top of the glaze. You just dip it down in. Spin it around, shake it a couple of times, and turn it right back over. So I will finish these up with you guys. And it will fall, all that uh, extra icing will fall down. And it's delicious, you guys. It smells so good. We opted to do these uh, today because uh, there's a basketball game tomorrow. And we didn't want the boys having donuts on basketball game day. And if you see that the glaze uh, has formed a bubble, just pop it and it pops right out. So see, they're not bad. I would say that, you know, when you know you have time, you know, that two to three hour window of time to work on these, those, those are the kind of days that you want to uh, make donuts. If you're in a hurry, probably not best to make them. Just enjoy the process and you get, you know, in between, you can go lay down, catch a nap <laughs> as you're waiting for things to rise. And it's a, a really fun process when you take the time out um, to make them. So there we have it. And I'm gonna start in on the next batch that Mono has uh, been working on. And so Mono, if you can come over here and, uh, She's bringing her next batch over, yay. I'll sit those over here. Actually, I'll sit them back over here. And uh, do you want to dip I, one? I just, after I've done the, the regular donuts, if I have those, I stick them all in there and just swirl them around all over. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the simplest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't Otherwise, them. you're just taking forever. Okay. Can you grab a fork? 
Yeah, so we'll have her show you how she does these uh, donut holes. The donut there, so just kind of. Now with them, I probably would make this a little bit thinner because they don't want to just swirl, uh -huh. but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah, mine was a little bit on the mm -hmm. thicker side. And then we just pick them up and put them in there. Put them onto your uh, mm -hmm. wire rack and then everything drips down in. For some reason, the kids always loved the donut holes first. Well, of course. <laughs> it just was fun. The one bite. <laughs> Magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, most people can't wait this long, but we did. And so it's fantastic. You guys can see the inside, how nice and fluffy that is, and the banana taste is to die for. Mm -hmm. So huge thank you to Mono for showing us this and uh, i hope you guys will try it as well and uh, we hope to see you again on the next series thanks everyone Bye. a little bit more milk in there